Whoa, uh, we have gotten a lot of feedback. Uh, yeah. That's awesome to see. A lot of people seem to be uh, interested in the same ideas that we are in terms of how can I begin to dive into woodworking? How can I start to uh, dip my toes into this new craft or kind of begin to develop uh, these skills that I've only got to try before? Yeah, it seems like there's this universal experience of just a challenge in this area. So yeah. we are really excited to hear that. Yeah, it's cool. So we have lots of comments, lots of good insights from people who are you know, educators for many years and people who are in the midst of that struggle right now. So we, we really uh, appreciate hearing from you all. That's it's great. There was this one uh, particular comment that uh, reminded me of um, the old the old proverb, the old uh, story, the idea of uh, the farmer walking through the field and picking up one stone mm -hmm. out of the field a day. Yeah, putting it in your pocket, walk back and you throw it in a pile. And, and what happens is every day that you're involved with that, you have one less stone in your field and one more stone uh, toward your, your dry stone wall. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a really strong image. It's this folk wisdom, I think, that gets passed around. Uh, and it, it has so, such staying power because it really resonates with the way we experience that, that we're able to, by just that daily little commitment, we're more and more involved. And before you know it, one of these days, you have a rock wall in a rock-free field. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the whole idea of, of um, these regular daily practices becoming habits. And that, again, is one of those things that we heard from so many different people who talked about uh, how to overcome the challenge of starting a daily habit, how to make that time and make that, that space in their lives. So um, the, the idea of creating a disciplined practice of craft in your life was something that um, so many of you shared with us uh, about how, how did you establish that? You know, what did you do um, to, to make that room in your, in your lives to, to commit to regular woodworking? You know, so many of us are, are very busy and yeah. don't know how to carve out that 15 minutes or whatever, that, but, but we really want to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the, the idea for me, it's like, is this practice. It's that, this idea of a committed discipline. You're, yeah. you're committed to something. Um, and whenever you're learning a new skill, no one's promising it's going to be easy. Right. You know, the whole I, the whole point of learning something outside of your comfort zone is that it's not comfortable. Yeah. It's pushing you to to step outside of that place and to to be able to try something new to develop this whole new horizon of of stuff that you haven't engaged with before. So this idea of commitment and discipline, yeah. uh, although it might great against what we're comfortable with, right? That's the path to success and being able to do it. But because we're, we're finite creatures, we can only take so much of it. So little bits at a time and pushing ourselves a little bit every day is what is, I think, the, I think the key, at least it is for me. I'm not Superman, so I have to be able to take a little bit every day to make it, you know, swallowable. Yeah, and I mean, you need to take a step. You know, the way to reach a goal or a dream is to take a step in that direction and then another step. And that's that's the same as picking up one rock. Your field might look like it's full of rocks, but eventually you keep working, you keep striding and you'll get there. Um, yeah. So another thing that we talk about a lot, and it's the same idea, is, is making not just the time, but the space, sure. right? You need a work area. You need a place to put your tools, a place to do your work. And so many people talk to us and they say, oh, I, I love to, I just don't have the space for that. And we're saying, you know, when you when you take the time to, to reach for your goal, now's the time to make the space yeah, too. Totally. Um, so, you know, if it's if you have a four foot long work surface that you can dedicate to your woodworking, it's a solid surface, it's up against a wall somewhere, mm -hmm. you can keep your tools there. Making that space is just as important as making that time. Um, yeah. And it's well, and even so, like this little bench here, this is just made out of two-inch softwood lumber. Nothing special. It's even got some knots in it. Uh, so it's just kind of you know ho hum lumber. Um, and this is actually a portable bench. We've uh, talked about that before in our YouTube videos. Uh, that this little portable bench is actually just assembled with torque screws. Just, just take it apart. Screwed together yeah. so that we can take it apart quick and throw it in the van to go to shows. Uh, that's not how we build our other benches. It's not ideal, uh, but you can just take some, you know, 
two by 12s and screw them together. And then at least you have a starting place. At yeah. least you have a, a place to begin to dip your toes into it. And so for us, I think that's, that's the thing that we want to encourage is if you don't have the space, uh, because you never sat down to make the big fancy yeah. Rubo bench build. Yeah. Make whatever, something like this. Just you can build your new bench together and get started. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, and that's, I mean, is that part of your, your whole journey? It is. Yeah. I mean, basically, I think, you know, nobody starts with the ideal setup. No one right. I've ever met. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the beginning place for me. So I started with one hand plane and one bench that I made. It was kind of a, a funny bench. It turned out all right. But what I was, I designed my workbench, which is not this one, but I designed it based on another, uh, a, di a totally different way of working wood uh, than what I ended up doing. Um, but it's okay because I actually ended up modifying my bench, I don't know, half a dozen times or something, uh, changing it, pushing the top back so that the front is flush with the legs. And I had different vices on it and trying different stuff to be able to make it, uh, you know, adapt to the work that I began to start doing this hand tool work. Um, so it really, you can start with whatever bench you have. Yeah. I and mean, I started with like a Black & Decker Workmate, right? One of those twin screw <laughs> things. And it was not super heavy, uh, not super solid, but it, it held what I was doing at the time. And I kept thinking, oh, I wonder if there's some better way of doing it. But it was a start. And then, um, you know, my next bench, which I still use the same bench top, was a solid wood door, you know, and that's my bench top. And <laughs> I mean, so you, you get started and you advance a little bit. You say, I want to make this change. I want to I want to adapt a little bit. I want to make this modification to my workspace. Maybe I want my tools hanging up here so I can see them. Yeah. But starting at starting somewhere yeah. is the most valuable thing you can do. Yeah. So it's like this delicate balance of trying to say, okay, well, the, the goal is not like always forever DIY make do. Right. That's not ideal. No. It's not. But we also don't want you to be paralyzed. Yeah. So you feel like you have to have a perfect situation. If you don't have anything, just make something. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lot of time, just take five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes isn't going to get you very far, yeah. but it's better than no minutes. Yeah. It's better than no time. Um, and so that's what I think what, what we're hearing from people and what we want to encourage is weave that into your life. Begin to cultivate that, that practice, that daily habitual practice. And then you'll say, well, I can, I can only afford five minutes. Yeah. And then you get going and you find out actually 15 minutes just yeah. passed. Wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, that's no, okay. <laughs> I'm not giving up much that's important, right? Like yeah. browsing time on the internet or something. Yeah, how long is this this video you're yeah. watching? You're wasting your time <laughs> on YouTube right now. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, and we've been talking, you know, in the past couple of videos about this because we've been, we have been brainstorming and working hard for the past several months, yeah. uh, the better part of this year actually, to find what we've defined as this middle way. We've talked about the value of getting in-person instruction for, for learning woodworking, going to classes yeah. and, and things like that. The, the pros and cons of that, and then the, the value of learning from videos and from books, mm -hmm. the pros and cons from that. And we've wanted to try and come up with a system that is a middle way that kind of bridges the gap between those two. Yeah, a way that admittedly it's not you know, all complete mentorship and it's not all only video, but it's trying to say, well, what is the, what is the sweetest and most nutritious fruit out of each of those? Right. And how can we get the most of that possible? Um, and I think the other thing is too, we've taught a few people in our shop at a time. Mm. We can fit six students in here, Yeah. but that's pretty finite. And we have a lot of stuff going on in our lives like you all do too. So we can't do endless classes, uh, in-person classes. So we thought, you know, how can we try to- How can we do a little more- Reach, reach more a few more people. With yeah. a little bit more impact than just publishing some video or something. Yeah. Um, so this is only so useful, but we want to be able to find a way to actually connect with people and, and help them and guide them as they struggle. Say, okay, we'll try this, try that. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to find this middle way. Yeah. Um, and we've, uh, over the past few months, uh, we've been talking about it, going back and forth, trying to come up with what can we offer people now? Um, and so we've come up with a program uh, based on our apprenticeship videos, uh, instructional video series. Uh, we basically said that series is, is great, but how would we do that in a way that's actually a structured, guided mentorship? Yeah. How would we actually have it be a scheduled 
uh, eight week program that people work through uh, joinery and basic skills and be able to uh, tackle those things, stock prep and using hand tools. And then when they struggle, yeah, they while can getting actually feedback, you know, reach like out. where we're communicating back and forth and they're sharing their struggles with, with us and with other, other students yep. and, um, you know, posting photos so that others can look and, and we can communicate in this way. And so the program we've come up with is called the Mortis and Tenant Apprenticeship Program. And like, like you said, it's an eight week program and we wanted it, we, it was very important to us that this be a scalable program. Yep. So there are people out there who have just a little bit of time, but they're really, they really wanna make craft a bigger part of their life. Their life. Yep. There are people who have more time and maybe they're a little more skilled, they're further along the journey, but we wanted this program to be able to, to provide something for them too, some, some deepening of the skill and, and making craft more of a habit in their lives. Yep. So um, this program can fit you know, all, all of those individuals. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is, a, it's like, it is this committed practice. It is, right. it's not easy. It's not something that, oh, I can just watch these 10 little YouTube videos right. and I'm all, I'm, and I'm skilled. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woodworker now. No, this is eight weeks of committed daily. We have weekly assignments. Yep. It's all, it's uh, a committed there's practice. There's our, our uh, weekly readings and uh, we have excerpts from different, different works, some historical works, some newer books. Um, it's all to get your mind and your hands connected yep. into making a habit, regular craft practice. Yep. So, so yeah, yeah. Um, we have been super excited about it. Uh, we've been tirelessly working, <laughs> <Very>. on, <laughs> working on this program uh, in, in hopes that it's going to help more people, help more people be able to engage uh, with their hands in the world. Um, so we are excited to be uh, opening registration for this yeah. program on Monday, July 19th. Yep just coming right up. Um, so we will have information about that, talking about it, where you can uh, find the website for that and get yourself signed up for this committed practice. Be able to put your hands to work uh, and do that thing that you always hoped you yeah. would be able to do. Uh, we're saying now's the time. Yeah, so stay tuned.